right, we've worked with derivatives of the natural, natural exponential function. Now let's look at integration. At the end of this lesson, you'll be able to evaluate an integral involving an exponential function. Alrighty, so we've got the integral, you'll notice, of e to the u. So basically what I'm going to be thinking to myself, what would I have to put here so that when I take the derivative, I will get e to the u. And we already found out in a previous video that if I have e to the u, when I take the derivative of it, I'll get e to the u du. So and we'll just put plus c. So um, the e to the u is its own derivative and is its own integral. So a couple hints that I'm going to give you on these problems because we'll work them just a little bit differently depending on what's going on in the problem. If there is one e in the problem, we will let u be the exponent. Okay. If there is more than one e in the problem, we're actually going to be letting u be a chunk, a bigger chunk. And I'll explain when we get to a few examples what exactly I'm talking about with saying chunk. All right, let's try something. Okay, this one I noticed there is one e sitting in this problem. So to work this, even though it looks like a lot's going on, I'm just going to follow my hint. It said we're going to let u be the exponent. So let's let u be the exponent and just see what happens. Well, negative x to the fourth, there we go. Okay, so now we need to find du. The derivative of negative x to the fourth is negative 4x cubed dx. Notice we have negative 4x cubed dx, so we're actually all set to rewrite this problem. So we know we have done nothing with the e, so the e is still in the problem. This part right here, the negative x to the fourth, gets to be replaced with u, and then negative 4x cubed dx gets to be replaced with du. So now we know the integral of e to the u is just equal to e to the u. So my answer is just going to be e to the u. I'll sub my u back in, and then I am done. All right, let's take a look at another one. Okay, we've got e to the tangent x secant squared x. Again, it looks like there's a lot going on in this problem, but if we just pay attention to the hint that I gave, if there is one e in the problem, we will always let u equal the exponent. So we're going to let u equal tangent x. Okay, so we need to find du which means we're going to find the derivative of tangent. The derivative of tangent is secant squared x dx. And you'll notice, once again, I have secant squared x dx sitting right in my problem. So everything is all set up exactly how I want it. So if we go to rewrite this, I have done absolutely nothing with the e, so we need to bring it down. The tangent x we called u, and secant squared x dx became du. And now we know that the integral of e to the u is just e to the u and we can sub our u back in. And then once again, we are done with that problem. Alrighty, next one. Now this one kind of looks like, again, like it's got a lot going on in the problem. I'm going to use the hint. If there is more than one e in the problem, there are two e's in this problem, we are going to let u be a bigger chunk. So in this case, we're going to let u be this entire denominator. So we're gonna let u equal one plus e to the three x. All right, let's take the derivative. The derivative of one is just zero. The derivative on this one, this would be like an e to the u. The derivative of e to the three x is just e to the three x, but then we have to multiply by the derivative of the three x, which is three. So this will actually be three e to the three x dx. And now if I look at my problem, notice I actually have e to the three x dx, I'm just missing the three. So I'm gonna put a three on the inside, one-third on the outside. So I'm going to have one-third, and then if I replace my information, 3e e to the 3x dx is actually du, and then the denominator we actually called u. So notice now we have one-third the integral of du over u. Using formulas from a previous video, we know that the integral of du over u is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of u. So I'm going to bring the one-third down. So now just rewriting, I'll have one-third natural log of u, which was one plus e to the three x, and then plus c. All right, let's try another one. Once again, you'll notice that I have two e's in my problem, so I'm not going to let u be an exponent. I'm going to let it be a bigger chunk, okay? The bigger chunk that I'm going to let it be, I notice that I do have something in parentheses, so that's exactly what I'm going to let my u be. We're going to let u equal 2e to the x, and then just see what happens. All right, so the derivative of 2e to the x would just be 2e to the x dx. 
um, I notice I have e to the x dx. I would like to have 2 e to the x dx, so 2 on the inside, 1 half on the outside. So let's just see what's going on here. Um, the one thing I have done absolutely nothing with is the word sign, so we're going to bring it down into my problem. The 2 to the ex we called u, and notice 2 e to the x dx we turned into du. So now from here, we are looking for the integral of the sine of u. And we learned a while ago that the derivative, the integral of the sine was actually negative cosine of u. And now we just need to put our u back in. So we're going to have negative 1 half cosine of 2 e to the x and then plus c. All right, one more problem here. We would like to find the particular solution that satisfies the initial condition. So we are given that the second derivative is equal to the sine of x plus e to the 2x, and we are given some information about the actual function in f prime. Our goal here is to find a formula for f, f of x, so that's where we want to get to. All right, I'm at the second derivative right now. We've got the second derivative of x is equal to the sine of x plus e to the 2x. To get rid of that, to get from the second derivative to the first derivative, we are going to take the integral of all the parts. So this side will just I'll be at the first derivative now. The integral of sine of x we've just known for a while is going to be negative cosine x. Okay. This next part I have one e, and if I have one e, we will always let u be the exponent. So I'm going to have du equals two dx. Um, notice I don't have a two in there, so I'll put a one half on the outside. So 1 half is on the outside. I've done nothing with the e. Um, u was my 2x. And then this 2 was a part of du. Okay, so from here I'm going to have the derivative is equal to negative cosine x plus 1 half. The integral of e to the u is just e to the u. And then plus c. Okay, we're now going to use the information given right here. We know that when x equals 0, my derivative will equal 1 half. So I'm going to have 1 half equals negative cosine of 0 plus 1 half e to the 0 plus c. So I'm going to have 1 half equals cosine of 0 is equal to 1. So I'm going to have negative 1 plus e to the 0 is equal to 1. So I'll have plus 1 half plus c. So let's see. 1 half equals negative 1 half plus 1 half is negative 1 half plus c. And if I add 1 half to both sides, I should end up getting c equals 1. So from here, let's see what we've got now. A little squiggly here. Um, we're going to have, I thought I'd give myself enough room. We're going to have the first derivative is equal to negative cosine x plus 1 half e to the 2x plus 1. Now from here, if I want to get from the first derivative to back to the function, we'll take again the integral of all three parts. Okay, so we've got, so let's see, f of x will equal, the integral of a negative cosine of x will be negative sine x, that negative is just gets tagged along, and then this next part, again, since we've got an e, and there's only one, we're going to let u equal the exponent, so u will equal 2x, and then du will equal 2. I have a 1 half there, I would like it to say 2, so I need to actually multiply by 4, because 4 times 1 half would give me 2, so I need to pull, multiply by a 1 fourth on the outside. So I'm going to have plus 1 fourth, the integral of e to the u, because remember I've done nothing with the e, so the e tags along, and then plus the integral of 1 is going to be x. So finishing this up here, we've got f of x is equal to negative sine x plus um, 1 fourth, the integral of e to the u is just e to the u, so it'll be e to the 2x plus x plus c, and now we still have to use the information that they gave us to actually find c. So we know that when x equals 0, my y will be 1 fourth. So I have 1 fourth equals negative sine 0 plus 1 fourth e to the 0 plus 0 plus c. So that will be 1 fourth equals the sine of 0 is 0. e to the 0 is 1, so I'll have plus 1 fourth plus 0, plus c, and that should give me that c is equal to 0. So my final equation, I'm going to go ahead and write up here, will be, let's see, negative sine x plus 1 fourth e to the 2x plus x 
and then we don't need to put anything because C was zero. So that will be the particular solution that satisfies those initial conditions. So hopefully now you can take the integral of a function that involves e to the x.